Yes. Yeah. yeah, good evening, everyone. And thanks for the kind words, ma'am. And thank you very much, Mulita, sir, for invitations for a, such a super duper uh, successful online uh, course from Transit of Federico Cardiography by Acta and your placings. Uh, today, I'm going to talk on the most vulnerable, horrified pandemics, which is unprecedented, and we are suffering in operation theaters throughout day and night, and what is our role and what problems we are facing by talking on the perioperative T uh, during this uh, pandemic. And what I'm going to deliver is from the bottom of my heart, because by myself, I survived from the coronavirus 2020 last month, and I'm sure I got it from the hospital environment in which I have uh, shifted and transferred to my family members as well. In the case of God, everything went on well. I'm sitting in front of you. But yes, it was really a nightmare and we definitely need to take it very, very seriously. And that's what I'm going to uh, sum up in a short time given to me. Uh, why it is horrified? Because a lot of misconceptions about it. One is the mortality, like what mortality has been projected is not that mortality is much more higher that even after getting COVID-19 negative, we get patients with a lot of complicated, because of complications because of the COVID-19 per se. A lot of data, the people just worried about the droplet infections, but now it has been proved that it is airborne, which is giving us more trouble. The virus per se is transferred to the airborne. So what protections we need to take it, by the surgical mask or E95, or the power that purifier and respirator, we need to use it in certain aerosol generating procedures. Which organs, like we always look at the lungs, but in fact, it is not only lungs, the patient may present with a myocarditis, complete heart block, myocardial infarctions, venous thrombosis, uh, acute renal shutdown. We keep on getting these patients every day now and then. The necessary investigations may not be possible, right? That all the investigations may be negative, still, we may get a uh, patient may have the COVID 19. And the treatment guidelines, which has been projected, and a lot of um, concept misconceptions are going, and which is the right line of treatment, even yet to be decided. So, if it if we target on the airborne or droplets, it is said that the particles with an aerodynamic diameter of less than 10 micrometers or less, they are the desiccations of axial respiratory droplets, and this uh, and that so the respiratory particles are having a diameter of 10 micrometer or less. And inspirable particles are having a diameter in between 10 to 100 micrometers. So the, the aerosols generated by the COVID, the corona patient, is a respiratory particles which penetrates right down to the lungs. And that is why on HRCT we see the peripheral ground glass appearance opacities, and that is what are horrified to us. So it is the airborne transmissions, the tiny particles which produced by the talking even, even suspended in the air and remain for a longer time and travel very much far distance as compared to the droplet transmissions where we talk about the cough and sneeze and then they are gravitational force settled down up to the level of the glottis or not more than that, but this airborne can go down to the lungs and deeper part of the respiration respirations. So in a patient having a COVID, the infected patient can travel and transfer these organisms to the close contacts to the airborne disease by but just communicating little this little far away even and their depositions and surface viruses can be uh, can go to the susceptible person by the even inhalational or spray or suspensions or by touching the nose nose and mouth and touch and the important aspect is how long you have been exposed in this vicinity of environment of a patient, that is also very important. And how much load of the virus you're getting to the inhalation, that also makes a difference. So we have to remember that this is airborne disease and we have to be very, very careful with that. So what we are dealing with, being anesthesiologists are highly susceptible individuals, which is six to seven times because of we are touching to the aerosol generating post like intubations. And the transit of each echocardiography is and that at further risk by putting the probe into the upper esophagus, uh, so uh, that oropharyngeal area. So it is aerogenerating procedures we are doing. So the close, uh, the contact persons wearing the ground gloves, well-fitted 95 masks, or if they have the PAPR or eye protection, goggles, face shields, they all should be there when we are dealing with it. So the full PP by both anesthesiologists, echocardiographer, like gown, uh, double gloves, face shield, well-fitted 95, with surgical mark on top. 
because when you are dealing with aero generating aerosol generating procedure it is very important that you can have the to protect your n95 mask by wearing the surgical mask on the top and consider keeping the patient's face covered with a towel or wrap during the entire examinations particularly in operation theaters when we talk about n95 mask yeah it is said that n95 means when we are talking about the very small particles only 95% of these particles can be filtered through it and if we, if we want to be very sure we are using the respirators which is available in the market and we can be much more safer but you have to remember that when we use this respirator the exhalation valve should be leak proof otherwise you can inhale or exhale the corona viruses because they don't have the filters doning pp and doffing every institution has now well known well about it and we know that how to do the proper doning and doning doning and doffing but very important is we when we wear the put on the n95 mask we usually put on the surgical mask over it in our institutional protocols we wear the double gloves and most important rather than doning the doffing is important where you are carrying the organisms to the one place to another place so which should be the very very different place from where you have entered the exit should be different with if you, if it is possible with a shower change into the clean scrubs and remove the glove gloves it the way you remove the gloves should not touch the surface of the hands so these are these are the important full uh, footsteps we have to follow now all the person should be educated well for this pp institutional protocol that that gear has to be in a proper way and most experienced echocardiographer should perform this examination include the probe insertions and the removal and that is very important that juniors unfortunately do not are not allowed which tests we rely upon mostly hrcts and rt pcr everyone now knows about it the scoring system differs from the corrects to the certain different uh, uh, lung, the lung lobe zones are 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 25 to 40 scores we usually go with the corrects and when we get four to five corrects that is giving us an idea but it's very important to remember that all patients are not the same it means negative test does not rule out the covid 19 so when we get a patients rt pcr hrc is negative then it does not mean unless and until we doubly confirm the rt pcr because this patient may throw the negative reports but this patients can carry this organisms so when we talk about the t for the non incubated patients that that is in the opd basis we should avoid it the reason behind it is it often patient the procedure often goes in coughing the direct proper transmissions patients cannot wear the mask physician cannot stand away from the six feet and accidentally irritate the trachea and may start the coughing but it should be avoided in these pandemic t for the intubated patients particularly when we do it in operation theater intubation intubation is highest aerosol generated procedures and it remaining in the air after the intubation so even after intubation we remain close only minimum with minimal people around the uh, uh, staff around the operation theater in, in the operation theaters we wait for some cycles the refresh cycles of at, uh, the room and then after 10 to 15 minutes we do the second aerosol generator procedure so it passes to the cardiac of probe insertions and it has to be done in a very proper way when we are putting the t in these intubated patients after the intubations then they are still the, when when there is a chances of ventilator disconnections and these ventilator disconnections can even spread some um, uh, organisms to the air in adventurously generating aerosols by the movement of endotracheal tube by the t probe movement can also be there an endotracheal tube could infect hands and surface of the infected patient so this is very important when we are intubating even the intubated patient though the chances of agp aerosol generation procedure is less as compared to intubations but we should be very careful even though the intubated patients can give us a trouble so this movement of the probe should be very gentle when you are putting the probe even in intubated positions and we usually keep covered with a plastic with the the sheet that is endoscopic sleeve over the t probe so ac recommends that all the t should be postponed and cancelled if the results are unlikely to change the clinical care of a patients and avoid and or use of alternative imaging when ever possible like the transthoracic echo echocardiography is or the epicardial echocardiography is possible so the t these are the special considerations in the determining the when and where it should be performed so it should be always important for the emergency cardiovascular surgeries 
when we are thinking of the intraoperative T. So if perioperative T is indicated and essential, if it is not essential, use other procedures like just before shifting the patient as for SH or T or with the airborne precautions. These are the conditions where you may think about the putting a T protein like urgent cardiac surgeries, urgent non-cardiac surgery in patient with cardiac comorbidities, perioperative hemodynamic instabilities, or certain cardiac procedures like aortic dissection, infective endocarditis, the uh, myocardial infarction with the mechanical uh, uh, complications or patients' prosthetic assessments. When we start examination, it is very important we minimize the scan time as much as possible and minimize additional personnel around the procedures and always correlate clinical and pathological correlations and just, just rather than going for the comprehensive, comprehensive examinations, just be focused on the, on, on the pathology and try to avoid the mild pathologies like mild MR or don't try to quantify the mild MR if it is moderate to see, but try and it may, if it is changing the outcome. Otherwise, try using other, other procedures like epigradiography. It's when you are having a suspected or confirmed COVID-19 should undergo the surgical or interventional procedure in dedicated COVID-19 operating rooms where they sometimes have the negative pressure chambers or there's a strict protocol of the suspicion or confirmed COVID-19. Remember that one important aspect that when there is a suspicious or yet report to be, to be there on the way and you need to take him to the emergency, then still consider this is a positive patient. So there is nothing like a negative patient unless and until two to three RT-PCR is negative or patient HRCT is negative, where HRCT is giving 90, 95% in sensitivity and specificity. Otherwise, all patient is considered to be the potential candidate uh, for carrying the, these infections. It has to be had your cath lab and limit the personnel unnecessarily, no movement of a person around the operation theaters once patient is inside the operation theaters. Before the procedures, we have to have the good PPE for airborne precautions measures like gown, face mask, shield, goggles, airborne protections, and mask. And most important thing, we use a double gloves. Consider covering the uh, double glove with a consider covering the ultrasound system with a plastic barrier, including transceiver ports. This is our protocol in our system. When patient comes into the operation theaters, we just apply this plastic wrap over the patients. With the intubating oxygen, ox intubating hood we have, and the, we always take a very personal care with the person around. Uh, even we try to keep the staff, we just try to do, manage with only doctors to support the doctors. So try to have a minimum time during the intubating conditions. And uh, we try to cover all our gazettes inside the operation theaters with the plastic cover. not only the eco machines or other machines, but try to even cover the rest of the equipment which is there, which is not in the usage. Use of dedicated ultra machine is very important rather than keep taking this machine to the outside the operation theaters of the eco lab and shifting this machine from the lab to the OT. If possible, have to have the dedicated machine with the compact unit. If portable eco machine is worthwhile rather than taking a 3D big machines, if it is not making outcome change, then taking a small uh, compact unit is very important. Disposable covers, as I have said, an important aspect is the some institutions that cover probe and machine, that's what we do. And that is a very important. We try to avoid sometimes CCG triggers. And it is important not to have the benefit of using protective cover if we are not sure that the this the, keeping the protective cover may harden, start keeping the suboptimal images and can prolong the scan times, then try to keep it away and just try to do it as quick as possible. It is said that usually in time should be less than eight to 10 minutes for any procedures for perioperative. So this is uh, why this is in the same oxygen hood. We are just applying the sheath over it. And then after the sheet, we are just placing the same oxygen hood. We are placing a T probe uh, in the, in the uh, patient's probe with the same uh, AGP layer. Considering that there is the same AGP, sometimes video laryngoscope can help you out. And we keep it this mask with the two holes. In one hole, the T probe goes in, and one hole, the endotical tube comes out, and they keep the cover on the patient's hair, uh, mouth and nose. And this is what our institutional protocol is to avoid this. To avoid contamination of surface, it is very important. Sometimes we use a one person can be designed 
to probe manipulation and another to adjust the instrumentation setting image optimization so so it doesn't transmit the probe contaminations to the patients and removal of unnecessary accessories from the machines like the trans accessory transducers or radiographic cabin cables or the jellies if it is not required should not be there on the machine itself so here these we usually have the two people around in the operation theaters to help when we are doing the cardiac surgery procedures so one person is showing the scan lines another is uh, another is managing the machines and this is what we do it in operation our uh, operation theaters after the sterility is very important it is the cdc says that 70% alcohol solution in the form of the spray or soft wipe should be there to disinfect as soon as the probe is exclu uh, excluded excluded after the procedure remove the probe from the patient disinfect with the uh, this uh, varicitel solutions place in a closed container and biohazard bag wipe out the outer gloss completely gown sleeves with the appropriate varicitel solution uh, very settled solutions and just remove your all this content outside the operation theaters and then wipe out which is the, the person should be different who is wiping out the uh, the probe and all and then these should after wiping it properly with the very settled solution should be there into the proper bag disposable bag which carries container into the different place for the proper sterilizations so if T is not necessary for peri perioperative care or a guide guidance. If it is, does not make any difference. Then we should not use it. But if it makes a difference, and just look at it, if it is COVID nineteen testing negative within last three days, then only accept it. Otherwise, you need to repeat it, and then you can proceed with T using the standard precautions. But if COVID status is unknown and patient is intubated prior to arrival in the operation theaters, if it is intubated already. Probe placement by the anesthesia or cardiologist using standard precautions, as considered with the less aerosol generating procedures. But it is not intubated. Then intubation and probe placement by anesthesia logist has to be done and with pure airborne precautions and followed by 20 to 30 minutes of air turnover period. So, when once AGP is completely over, both intubation and tube uh, probe placing in, there has to be 20 to 30 minutes air turnover period is very important. Now, if patient is having COVID-19 testing positive, strict isolation gear, limited person, intubation and place, place probe placement by an sociologist, expertise person, assess the T, T echo periods and wait for 20 to 30 minutes before. So to conclude, it is very important to avoid T testing when, uh, if it is not, uh, uh, whenever it is possible, which is not making any clinical orientations or decision making. When performing a perioperative T, consider the risk benefit ratio. Limit the number of staff present during the procedure, that is very important. The use the most experienced staff to limit exam examinations, perform focus examination, look at the clinical and compare it with the clinical pathology with the clinical or, or orientations. Just as you give more stress and dance, thoracic and come to the very, very concentrated examination, educate all person on the correct use of personal protective equipments, well-fitted N95. So once you are placing N95, you have to do the exhalation test to see that it is totally well-fitted around the nose and mask. Correct placement and removal of safety gears. It is also very important. It is, it is more important than wearing it. So just to sum up, the COVID-19 pandemic is very horrible as I passed through myself and got it from this environment only. So be safe. And if and I, I got very, very good picture that if you can read this, you are too close. So keep the person distance from yourself as much as possible, whether we are in cafeteria sitting or doctor's room, doesn't mean that everyone is safe. So with that message, I conclude the talk. Thank you very much and stay alert and stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Naman.